And what kind of setups do you look for before you jump jump in on the trend? Sure. So overall, like how I think about price action just in general, there's, so there's basically four different uh, setups for me as far as like how price works and kind of how I operate within that. Um, so I think like a stock bottoms on what I call a reversal extension. Um, and then after the reversal extension, you'll have what I call a wedge pop. Um, then from there, you'll have what I call an EMA crossback. From there, you'll have a basin break at some point if it's going to work. And then from there, you'll top out on a reversal extension. And, you know, price kind of moves through those different patterns um, throughout their movements in their, in their cycle. Um, so what I was going to do here is I thought Tessa did a real nice job of showing this. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep in this move into February, but you know, we move this to me is a basin break and we kind of ride the moving averages higher. This to me would be a reversal extension in that hugely extended from the 10 day, like what the 10 days at like 135 here, this thing traded up to 190. Um, so what you're, you know, you're about 45% extended and you've got huge volume, right? So this is, this to me is people are commit capitulating to the upside. Um, so to me, that's like a sign to step off this thing. This is kind of the top of the stock. We try to trade back up. And then right here, we we trigger what I would call like a wedge drop. You kind of tighten. You can't make progress higher. And then you fall back through the moving averages. And then, you know, to the downside, things are sloppier. Like this would be your EMA cross back where you trade it down through the moving averages. You trade back up, find resistance, roll back over. Um, but kind of is where I wanted to start, though, and really explain what I do, because the majority of what I'm doing is to the long side, is a reversal extension is really, we're extended to the downside on the daily chart, but we're into a higher time frame level, right? So, so I'll show you how you can use this on, the, on like a five minute chart with the daily chart in a second. But if you look at the weekly chart on this Tesla, so if we come back out and look at this weekly, we had a massive base right here. We had this shakeout here, and then that's what led this move. And so I believed in Tesla. I had conviction in Tesla, which certainly helped. But we sold down and were extended onto the daily into a higher time frame level, right? So we're into this level. So you see that. So let me pop back out to the daily. Uh, whoop, sorry. So if I come back out to this daily chart, um, we're extended to the downside here and confluence is big, right? So we also had this 200 period moving average here. Mm -hmm. And I actually bought Tesla right here on this day. I think it was around like $400 or maybe it was 350, I think actually. Pre-split. Uh, yeah, pre-split, yeah. And so the, 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 the setup for the reversal extension is you're buying the extension, you know, with the stop on the low. For me, I was really kind of trading this on a shorter time frame. And your target is the is the 20 EMA. Um, so that is, and that's really, you're looking to peel a piece there, mainly because I expect the market to pull back at the 20 period moving average. And then you'll see with Tesla, we then built what I call a wedge pop. So we resisted here at the 20 EMA and we kind of chopped underneath here and we kind of built, you know, some sort of basing type pattern. Um, we could have rolled all the way back over and, you know, it would have been invalidated, but we, we didn't and we, and we popped back through the 20 EMA. So that's a wedge pop to me. And then the next test back of the moving average is what I call an EMA cross back. And it, it is a good time, in my opinion, to try to execute on a low risk basis um, because let's say you miss the wedge pop, you like the name, you know, you get an opportunity to try versus the 10 EMA or try versus the 20 EMA here. Um, and then, you know, the, the idea is you want to ride those 20 period moving averages higher or the, the 10, 20 day kind of whatever, whatever moving average that the name is respecting. So I, I had actually bought into Tesla here. I took a trade in it. And, and to be honest, I, I could have traded this better. But, you know, I made, I think I made like 100 points out of it in like a day. It was crazy. Um, but then I, I really got in on this on the wedge pop here. So I got in on this on the wedge pop. I believe this was earnings, if I recall correctly. And it was like higher than this. And I really should have sold it all in the post market. But I, I sold some of this in here. And then I stepped back in on it. 
on the EMA cross back to the 20 EMA. So literally like a day and a half later, but I mean, this is actually percentage wise, a pretty decent move and it kind of didn't do much. And I, and I added to it right here. This was really where like Tesla became like a real trade for me. Um, mm -hmm. Added to it here. This was like a nice big cup and handle. So really when you're going to get a sustained trending move, in my opinion, you're going to have a big base. So this is all like very tactical, but this is where it turns into a true trade. So this is a pretty big cup and handle. We go up and we build what I call a base and break now. So this is, this is like a true basing pattern into the 20 EMA. I really like stocks above the 20 EMA. I find that when things get below there, some people like to hold to the 50 SMA and you can see that it worked pretty well in Tesla. For my personality, it's too long. I like the 20 EMA. Um, so we, we build a basin break here and we trade higher. And then this right here, we start to get extended from the 20 to the 10 EMA. That to me is like the reversal extension is kind of like the end of this trade. Um, and we just kind of base again. So to me, this is another basin break. And this was also like a descending channel for me. And I bought back right in here. I actually traded this just to be, you know, transparent. I, tr I tried this two or three times in here and kind of got chopped up. Um, so, if, you know, if I can reduce that, that's a big goal of mine this year. Um, but I, I bought back in here. It trended higher. Um, and I, I sold out right here. And then I, I really took a hit right here. So I, I bought back in versus the 20 EMA. And I added at the close here and I had a pretty good size position on. And after the bell here, I, I even believe this might've been a Friday, actually. Uh, it was announced that Tesla wasn't getting added to the S and P. And I think I sold down around like 360 or 380. I can't remember exactly, but you know, that, that hurt, um, for sure. And you know, what are you going to do? And then Tesla really kind of based for, for multiple, for really like a month, um, which is great because if you think about it, I mean, this thing went from 150 to 500 and it needed time to consolidate. Um, and then everybody kind of knows we gapped up on the S and P inclusion and I took a really nice trade into this into year end, um, where basically I bought like, I love big gaps. So, uh, one of my sayings is, or it's not my saying, but some of the things I picked up are big gaps up equal the streets caught off guard, right? So nobody kind of expected this. It didn't fill the gap. That's a sign of strength to me. So I bought through this 460 level. Um, I actually did sell some here into 600, which I bought back off the 10 day. And I kind of did the same, same thing here. I, I, I did pretty a pretty good job on this into year end. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, really it trended all the way higher. Um I sold this yesterday, uh, basically in the pre-market and reason being it got extended from the 10 day and, you know, that's a good time to take profits. I think one of the things I'm trying to get better at is just being comfortable. Like, Hey man, you, you just took like 300 points out of this thing. Like it's 150 points from the 10 day. It's like, like, it's okay to take it off. And if it goes to 900, like who cares? Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the things I'm trying to get more comfortable with. Um, so I do have a little of this on now, but, you know, realistically this trade's kind of over for me. If it, if it trades in this wick tomorrow and really builds out this flag, you know, I'll add some back. Tess is one of the few stocks that I kind of more trade a little. It's kind of my favorite stock. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of what I do. So you get the reversal extension, the wedge pop, the basin break, and then you usually end on an extension of some sorts. And as long as we're in an uptrend, I'll buy, I'll buy pullbacks to these moving errors. I'll let the market prove me wrong. Um, so, so that's, you know, kind of how I, how I view it.